Tyler are back again for another video with snacks. My name is Emily and I'm a, well, I finished fourth year. I'm a fourth year medical student. Um, currently not based anywhere because we're on summer holidays. Oh my god, my line doesn't work anymore. Can yeah. I be based in Hamilton at the Waikato like like Hospital? hospital. <laughs> um, no, my name's Emily. I'm a fourth year medical student and I am heading to Waitamata next year for fifth year. And we're filming a much requested video. I've had multiple kind of DMs and comments about, can you please film how you study? And I thought, do you know what? I've brought my favorite person along, your guys' favorite person along, the one and only Tyler. Introduce Ooh. yourself, Tyler. Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm also a finished fourth year. Um, I was based at Middlemore Hospital, and next year I am going to Emily's Old Hood, um, Waikato Hospital but I will be in the Regional Rural Program, so out in the watts for 10 weeks. Now you know who we are. Welcome, welcome, and welcome to my channel. Click. <coughs> Click subscribe. <laughs> and like down mm. below, and put a comment. Mm. You yeah, know? we love a comment. Mm. Sorry, I've just been too busy to reply lately. <laughs> I appreciate every comment, and I get back to you as best I can. She's a very busy lady. Life is hectic at the moment. Always on the go. But, I have sat down for you guys to make notes on how to make notes. I'm making notes. Okay. Yeah. So, if you didn't know by the title of this video, this video is about how we study in medical school. You could definitely apply a lot of these things to first year for sure, but this is particularly once you get into med school, how do we study, how did we get through, how did we make the most of the time we had, I guess, to learn all the knowledge we had to learn. And we're gonna kind of split it into two bits. What's the first bit? Preclinical. And the second bit is? Clinical. Yeah, so second and third year, and then, well, our experience with clinical so far, which yeah. is four, five, six, but we're only about to enter five. So this, just take it with a grain of salt. And Obviously, change. yeah, every year's different. Mm. The key idea is that you will constantly have to adapt every mm. year, basically. So here are some tips and tricks on. Yeah, have a growth mindset, not mm. a fixed mindset. I've got notes here, Tyler's probably got notes in her head. <laughs> um, we've both got our iPads here, because we'll show you, but I'll probably do like a screen grab, so you guys don't have to like try and focus on the iPad. But that's, we just use a few different note taking apps and things like that, so I thought we'd show you that. Wherever you're watching this video, I think most med schools are the same and that the first year or two is mostly theoretical learning. So you mostly got lectures, labs, I can't even remember. Clinical skills? Yeah, well, le well that's lectures, mean. lab, practical skills stuff, human anatomy stuff, like mm. it's a little bit different to normal uni but the same sort of things apply and the main chunk of the year is modules with tests at the end of it. Yeah. So I'm sure as you're well aware in any university you kind of do a paper and then you sit your exams at the end. Our med school is slightly different in that we it's split into modules and you have a test at the end of every module rather than like an exam segment but there is still a quite two periods of the year we have like quite a few tests. Yeah. If you want to know kind of how the breakdown of our medical school was we've got a video all about first year of medical school which kind of breaks down what we learn how it like um, how it's set up all that sort of thing so we're not going to go through that now so you can go watch that if i know how to do it i'll link it in the corner that not corner <laughs> that corner but i guess like tyler said the keys to adapt and everyone is different so mm -hmm. my first key for you would be don't compare yourself to everyone around you mm -hmm. right yeah you're just gonna do what works well for you mm. Yeah, everyone is different and I, at the start of medical school, used to compare myself to my peers who spent like hours in the library. Yeah, for sure. And like there were people who were always in the library. Every break we had, I remember them just being in the library yeah. and I was kind of like, how did they do that? 
because that's not me. Yeah. I'm not very type A, which I guess is the difference between us. I think you're quite type A. Yeah. The library was not my happy place for studying. Like, I definitely did study there, but... Yeah, and that definitely made me feel nervous, anxious, like a little bit subpar. Mm. Comparing myself to my peers who were always in the library. I don't know, did you spend time in the library? I spent quite a bit of time in the library. But yeah, mm. it is a bit intimidating at first because a lot of people just go there and you're just like, oh shit, they must be studying a lot. Mm. But I just quite liked the environment. Also, the fact knowing that everyone is studying and it kind of was like, Next year, you study, you study mm -hmm. rather than just sit there on my phone, which I did do sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't mind it in the end. I did like studying at campus. Yeah, there was definitely lots of different spots to study. There's some parts in the library I liked, and I definitely liked before a test, mm. like kind of revising with people in the yeah, library. Like the in the rooms. Rooms. Yeah, the breakout rooms. Yeah. My key thing that I would say to people is like learn how you learn. Mm -hmm. So I am a read slash write slash visual learner what would you say you are yeah i'm very much the same mm. reading well writing like writing things out more so than reading a text and then visually seeing that and making a mind map of how these ideas link in together so building connections between yeah. stuff yeah there are lots of different quizzes you can do online i will try and remember to link some below but you can see if you're like a read write audio visual kinesthetic there's actually like quite a lot of types of learners. If you go to Google and kind of look at how to learn, there are kind of things they recommend and that work well and studies have shown work well, but just take it with a grain of salt, that might not work for you. Yeah. Personally, for me, I don't really take notes. So that might come as a shock to you because it's like, well, what do you do then? How do you learn? When everyone asks, like, can I see your notes? How did you take notes? I'm like, well, I don't really have any notes. As you can see on my screen, the dark blue is the notes kind of I took during the lecture. So I would download the PowerPoint and during the lecture, I would add notes. That's the dark blue. So that's probably the closest I got to really making true notes. Like you can see in this one, that I've written quite a lot of notes. I love it when the lecturers talk to their slide. Yeah. Rather than read off their slide. Exactly. Because I definitely find it more interesting and like taking notes in the lecture kind of mm. helps me if I'm typing it out. Yeah, do quite well. Anyways, I'll stop that screen grab. How do you take notes in a lecture? So, by Tyler's figuring out what she wants to show you, I used to do, when I had time, um, one page summaries of the lecture and I would just compress all that content into one page mm. before I would start making flashcards. As you can see here, RDA, this is reproduction development and aging. So this is like the HPA axis um, lecture, the ovary, ovary, <laughs> ovary and mm -hmm. ovarian cycles lecture, the uterus and menstrual cycle lecture. So yeah, I did just used to kind of compress the lecture and the key images from each lecture into notes like this just one page so i wouldn't call these true notes because they're not like my extensive learning like you can see on this page the male reproductive tract and endocrine control i have a feeling this was more than one lecture and i've just compressed it mm. into one page the oh great thing with good notes which is the app we both used mm. is you can like zoom right in so you can still can fit a lot on a page yeah but it forces you to kind of summarize and and think about the content a bit more rather than just copying and yeah. pasting it and like what you want i used to do that kind of after the topic or the lecture to just make sure i kind of understood the basics before continuing on so for me i am a very colorful and visual learner so i what i found useful is using colors and kind of this what you're looking at right now is very um Full on diagram and I eventually got it in the end but I use colors to kind of um, what's the word like link ideas together. ideas together so I can see a general theme I basically just scribble down rough points as the lecture goes and try and um, emphasize stuff with colors and so I know to go back to it and then th um, this is kind of my good notes that I spend a lot of time 
writing them down and so when do you do these no good notes so when i have time because we obviously do it quite a lot of content during the day i would try and smash out that lecture those lectures that Pick night mm -hmm. yeah the space repetition yeah so mm -hmm. i've already gone over the same like lecture content within the same day and then try to do it like revise later on to kind of keep it in my memory okay so yeah because this is how we study video how do you structure your notes how do you use color say so like would one topic be one color or one part of the body system be one color or like what um in this instance i would have colors per lecture so i can kind of go back to them so go go up a little bit so up down so see here mm. do these colors relate to the image yeah, yeah they okay. um yeah so the, yeah, so the green was like the glutamate and gabba is blue yeah. so yeah i just use colors as a visual aid to just link yeah. into the the diagrams that we know that will probably be in the test so how long do you reckon you would spend per lecture writing up your good notes maybe like an hour per lecture I say. yeah, yeah. I, I spend quite a bit of time on my notes because i'm quite particular and before getting an ipad in third year i was actually handwriting notes in second year and it took me even longer hmm. because i was such perfectionist on my notes that I would start again. So I highly recommend um, iPad because you can just easily Rub erase it and, and restructure your notes also to make sense. So on that note, I've had a lot of people ask me, should I get an iPad for study? And I've studied without an iPad and then I've studied with an iPad and I 150 million percent recommend an iPad and I recommend investing in either Good Notes, which is what both Tyler and I use, and notability so you've just seen tyler's kind of good notes way so she will like go to the lecture write notes in the lecture and then get home and like formally write up the notes mm. so for me like you saw i would write the notes during the lecture but i wouldn't write up notes when i got home so i use anki there are a million videos online about how to use anki and i also do physical flash cards because it means I can like do them with my friends like just before the test. So I thought I would show you really quick. So this is like maybe 15 lectures of content mm. like this. I like a mix of Anki and physical flashcards because I do like, like I'm a read write kind of learner so I do like the act of writing. But like Tyler said, space repetition and like repetition and mm. air is key. And I don't know about you, like when you read your notes, do you ask yourself questions while you, write, you read your notes back? Like, oh, I wonder why that I, is, or yeah. what would be the consequence of that, or... Yeah, um, later on in my study journey, I did, but before mm. that I didn't, and then I, I, I got asked, do you ask yourself questions, and I go, mm. no. And then so that's what I try to include. Per lecture, I'd ask maybe three questions and have mm. that as a as an exam revision tool as well. Yeah, so if you don't use flashcards and you are going to write notes, you still need to practice what I call active recall, mm -hmm. which is where you have to like pull the information from your brain. You're not just like reading it and giving it to yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you don't use Anki or you don't use flashcards and you spend hours writing notes, that's fine if that's what works for you, like that's what works for Tyler. But like she said, like having questions that you ask yourself is really important because you need to pull that information from your brain. For example, like this just says internal balance of K plus, which is potassium. And then on the back, you can't really see there, but I've just got two bullet points. Like the kidney is primarily responsible for maintaining total body potassium and initial changes in extracellular potassium are initially buffered by movement of potassium into or out of skeletal muscle <laughs> regulated by insulin and catecholamines. Yeah. To be honest, I've chucked out most of the flashcards I ever made because like, who needs this crap lying around? But I kept these ones because they're from our regulating body function topic. Mm. And I still find them helpful to test myself sometimes. LDL target, do you know it? No. Low density cholesterol, right? Was it 1.8? Yeah, under mm. 1.8. Should we just do a quick, um. how good's our active recall? What are some alpha blockers apart from doxazacin? Prazacin and terazacin. Mm. You know, hypoxemia, um. hypoxia versus hypoxemia. Mine are also color coded per topic, mm -hmm. per lecture, and they got the lecture number in the corner so that 
if I go back and look at the slides and the notes, I can then question, do the quiz essentially that I've made for myself afterwards. Active recall really got me through preclinicals. I felt like I didn't study as much as other people because I felt like my study wasn't really effective. Yeah. Cramming is bad, right? Like everyone knows cramming is bad, but everyone still does it. Because I you don't. get oh Tyler doesn't. <laughs> I do. You get stressed the day of that, like, do I know everything? There's something called rapid forgetting. So if you cram, you then rapidly forget. And it's important in medical school to not rapidly forget, right? Because you're gonna be applying that knowledge to real life people in For the rest of your life. situations where it's like life or death sometimes. So I think things like space repetition, active recall are really important. There's also something called a memory palace. Did you ever use a memory palace? No. <laughs> so I think you, you got taught about it, I got taught about it, but I didn't use it a lot, but I did try it a few times and it actually did work. I think there's a really crucial way to build in your memory palace, which I've printed out here, oh. which I didn't really know, which I wish I had known. You need to create images for each term you're trying to remember. So imagine if you're trying to remember the drugs that can cause pancreatitis. Do you know the six drugs that cause pancreatitis? That can drugs. cause? Yeah, drugs that can cause pancreatitis. All I know from pancreatitis is I get smashed. That's the causes, but the D is drugs, right? Mm. I don't know. So it's like which drugs? Yeah, right? So I'm going to help you remember it. The memory palace is essentially about creating a place you know inside your head, like your house or a friend's house or a place you like to visit. And then you have images for each term you're trying to remember inside the house. So you're going to remember six spots inside a house mm -hmm. for like the six causes of pancreatitis. And then you're going to imagine an image on each of those spots. You would use images because it's pretty easy to bring up an image in your brain, especially if they're attention grabbing images. And then you can remember the things that you associated with each image. There are different ways that you can think of the image. So you can have an image that sounds like the word you're trying to do. So for example, papule sounds like papa and mule. So imagine an excited new dad riding around on his baby mule. <laughs> looks like, for example, a parasha cell looks like a fried egg. That is true. Yeah. The parasha cell does what? Hydrochloric acid in the stomach, right? Stomach acid? I, I could be wrong. Does it also do um, B12? Intrinsic, is it intrinsic factor? And yeah, that. Maybe. I think so. You guys know better than us. Yeah. You're the ones that are watching this to get <laughs> learn more, so. And then seems like, so for example, taking sedative medication and feeling drowsy seems like what a bear might feel like while hibernating through winter. The more unique and descriptive your image, the better it will stick. We've got the six drugs. I don't actually know what they are. I know one is corticosteroids. One yeah. is diuretics. I actually don't know. Drugs that cause pancreatitis. When you think of diuretics, think of your bedroom and think of your bed. And think of someone peeing on the bed. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's diuretics. So you're walking through your house, you start in your room. The second one is you look out the window in your room. There's a giant angry body Buddha on steroids smashing the window next to your bed because he's on corticosteroids. Yeah. Yeah. You think of a drunk person missing the doorway to a room and like hitting the wall or something. Mm -hmm. Aslan sounds like azathioprine, like yeah. Aslan, azathioprine. So you can think of Aslan mm -hmm. hiding in your wardrobe, azathioprine. <laughs> That's an immunosuppressant. Dedanosine, dye ocean. <laughs> you can think of... The Titanic sinking in your outdoor pool, oh right? Oh my god. Die ocean, die damascene. I wonder if we could come up a better one. This is just what they've suggested. Oh, is it? Yeah. I thought this was, yeah. Nah, what's die? I think it's die damascene. So you could think of Danny off Love Island. He's swimming in your niche. pool. Yeah. Die Danny. And then valproic acid, That is that like for seizures? There's sodium valproate. Yeah. Surely that's the same thing. So you could think, I mean, I know what sodium valproate or valproic acid is. So you could think of someone having a seizure on your couch. Or if you don't know that sodium or valproic acid or sodium valproate causes se uh, helps people with seizures, how would you remember this? A valiant professor, Indiana Jones, swinging from the ceiling. So think of valiant professor, valproic acid. 
I mean, that's a bit of a stretch if you ask yeah. me. <laughs> I just think of someone having a seizure on the couch. So yeah. now we've got, if we turn this over, so we've got peeing on the bed, diuretic, smashing down the window, corticosteroid, running into the wall, alcohol, alcohol aspirin in your wardrobe, as a, as a fire print, mm -hmm. Danny dying in the pool, didanosine, and valproic acid. Seizures. So that is a memory house. I just walked around my house and saw that crap happening. Mm -hmm. It's in my head, the images in my head, and those are the six main drugs that cause pancreatitis. It's a bit of effort, but I never really thought of it, but I think it could actually be quite helpful. It could be helpful though. Mm. Obviously Tata and I didn't really use that method a whole lot, but I did just want to highlight yeah, it. Yeah. The reason I used Anki is because it does that space repetition for you and yeah. if you get it wrong, it'll bring it up more and more for you. It's very much like you don't have to work hard yeah. to like know what you should learn. Because com the computer does it for you basically. Oh. I, I tried it out when I heard about it, mm -hmm. but because I'm such a like, heavy note taker, like, like... You like writing with your hands. Yeah, that I it made me anxious just relying on like a few bullet points per like per topper per to like yeah or like per um yeah. flashcard although you can make tons of flashcards to, to cover the same amount yeah there's also quizlet and so yeah. you might be able to find kind of flashcards a lot of things that have been that. made for like for your topic already so you don't even have to make them but i think there is something to be said for making them because you learn as yeah. you make them mm -hmm. i've got some other things here so this is not really like how to study per se but things that help Work on the things you don't know rather than the things you do. Yeah. Like, it's easy to study the stuff you know and like. Mm -hmm. So, push yourself out of that comfort zone and study the hard stuff. Like, approach that first and, like, reward yourself last with just, like, revising the stuff you already know. It's like if you're at a lecture and you see your learning objectives that you need to tick off, there's the easy ones up the top. Maybe leave that to last and mm -hmm. cover the heavy ones first while you're, like, fresh. Yeah. And then you can do the stuff that you already know after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like, well, I guess make sure you know the easy ones. Because yeah. the hard ones would be impossible if you don't know the oh, easy exactly. ones. exactly. But the yeah. easy ones are often quite easy. Like, just like, describe like what pancreatitis is. And you're like, yeah. well, it's inflammation of the pancreas. Easy. Like, I kind of had a little bit of a, I tried to have a timetable where it was like 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 was like full-time work and study. Yeah. And then after that, it's like relaxed time. Because you need downtime. I don't think... I don't know, you obviously don't need as much downtime as me because you study so hard. Mm. But I love a bit like a couple hours winding down in the evenings. And on the yeah. weekends, I don't really study. <laughs> it's so bad, but I'm filming this video on how to study, but I don't really study. I mean, your study is effective the way it is. It doesn't mean that you, yeah. you don't really need to study more. I probably still could refine my study to narrow it down the yeah. time. We're not perfect. Yeah. We're like, still learning. We're telling you what we know and how we know it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's the best way. So take all what everything you say with a grain of salt. Yeah. I mean we're getting we got to fifth year. So we must be doing something alright. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> like burnout is real. It's mm. very real. Yeah. Yeah. Do I you feel, feel like it. you've felt burnt out at all this last year? I think I felt very close. There's a lot of stuff you need to study for and it can be quite overwhelming. So sometimes if you can feel yourself, but I can feel when I'm getting burnt out, you just need to stop and give yourself a break. Listen to your own body and your own cues. Yeah. Pretty much. I would do that and then sit down, re-sort out my priorities and like what I need to get done to give yeah. myself a m more of a break and yeah. yeah. Did you try any of the timing techniques like Pomodoro? Oh, love that. I'm pretty sure all the one, the vision, or what I use is 25 minutes and, five and then minutes five minutes off. Mm -hmm. I personally, from I use this when I have to write essays. So for us, we have to write um, portfolio pieces. I struggle so much with that. So. I found I was most productive just knowing I've got 25 minutes, smash it out, and then I can have a break. And I got through it so quickly. And would you do like two lots of 25 minutes, 5 minutes, 25 minutes, 5 minutes, and then have a longer break? Or like how many? Sometimes it depends on how I go. Like if I was typing away and I was like, oh my god, 25 minutes really, I'll just do it again if I mm -hmm. could go another 25 minutes. Or if I was really struggling, then I would take a break. And sometimes you can give yourself a longer break if you need to. Yeah. It's just kind of a... I guess it's up to you. But yeah. Yeah, I found that 
the 25 minutes I would feel like I was just taking off at like 15 right. to 20 minutes mm. and then it'd be like break time I'd be like no 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 I just feel like I'm just getting going yeah so I went better with like a 40 to 50 minutes on mm. and then like 10 to 15 off yeah. and I would walk away from where I was studying or writing yeah and go on Instagram or read my book or put the TV on or something like not at my desk yeah and then after that like 10 or 15 minutes I'd come back and be like okay ready for another like 40 to 50 minutes I love the study with me's on YouTube mm. where it's like 25 minutes on five minutes off with someone yeah and when it's like chill music like no words oh. just instrumental yeah lo-fi lo-fi lo ra hip-hop radio yeah on yeah. spotify that was like in my top five um on my raps last year like, I was yeah to it all the i time. listen i put the live one though and that's on youtube because, oh, i do that sometimes yeah too. i put it on the tv and it's like an anime of someone studying Just, yeah and i love that as well sometimes i put the crackling fire on the tv oh, nice. so it's like cozy sit Obvious. down to study did you ever use mnemonics like like get smashed, I get smashed um, and stuff. I had it until this year because a lot of the doctors actually use, use them. Yeah, so. I've noticed that too, a lot of doctors use mnemonics. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, they're actually helpful. And they actually pull yeah. the mnemonic out like... On the go. On the go. Yeah. Do you know, can you think of any off the top of your head? What is it, I get smashed? Is this like iatrogenic? Yeah. Gallstones. Gallstones. And then I think it's alcohol. Oh, or, like ethanol? Yeah. Is it? Oh, e, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Ethanol, yeah. Um, T, like trauma. S. Steroids. Ah, uh, yeah, duh. M, malignancy. Mm. A. Autoimmune. Right. S. Scorpion. Oh, scorpion. I remember yeah. that. We that's don't even have real... scorpions here, but I was like, oh. That's like the weird one, yeah. Yeah. Um, H, hypertriglycerides. Hyper so like, yeah. or hypercalcemia. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, e E R C P. So that's when you have the retrograde to look at the things. So mm. that can cause pancreatitis. Yeah. And drugs, which are what are the drugs? Diuretics, alcohol, corticosteroids, azathioprine. I don't know. Azathioprine. Yeah. And then di. Didanosine. And. And. On the couch. Oh, Valpro. Acid. acid. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! I know it. We know it. I feel like we should use it more. Yeah. Yeah. Mnemonics. They use them a lot in the hospital. The doctors use them. I highly recommend if that's something that works for you. A lot of the textbooks, the medical textbooks, have them in. Yeah. If that works for you, that's great. Highly recommend learning the ones that are in the clinical textbooks. Yeah. Talking of textbooks. Oh yeah. Do you use textbooks? I didn't use them in, uh, in second and third year. No. I use them now a lot in fourth year. Mm. Clinical medicine, the Oxford one. <coughs> I use. Um, <coughs> Choking. I'm like. <coughs> um, I also use Kumar and Clark's um, clinical medicine book too. Tally O'Connor, my Bible. The mini. Um, I'm gonna get it. <coughs> oh mm. my god, the mini one. I reckon it's better than Oxford. Is it political medicine or is it um, Yeah, it's like the Talia Conica, this examination mm. and history taking one. Mm. The mini one. Mm. So good for in your bag. Yeah, um, that's my next. Yeah. My so, Cormoran Clark, Oxford, Talia Connor. Any other books? I'll have a look if I've got any here. Oh. ECG's made easy. I am going to get that too. I just use the ones online, <coughs> like Life in the Fast Lane is a good website for that. Geeky Medics, great website. Geeky Medics, love it, yeah. That's for clinical stuff, we'll talk about that soon. Study groups, I recommend a study group. I always had a study group like the day of the exam and yeah, we would just we kind of have a big run through of everything with the whiteboard and just everyone throwing their ideas out because you'd be like, oh, I, I forgot that. about that. Oh, yeah. I missed that or something. And then you just pick up all those little nuanced stuff you don't think about. Exactly. I think study groups are great during the year two. Just to hold each other accountable. You don't actually have to. You can study together as in mm. throw ideas off each other. But it's also good to just be with someone who's yeah, studying. Yeah, exactly. If you can get your hands on practice exams and tests. <clears throat> highly recommend. Oh my god, I'm actually choking. Definitely do it. But don't take them as Bible. Because they change the questions each year. And stuff. Yes. At our yeah. university. Mm. We're giving at the start yeah. of each lecture and each topic. Yeah. A list of learning outcomes. That is what they're going to test you from. 
test yourself from that too. Turn mm. the learning outcomes into questions. Yeah, if you can answer, and there's you. Yeah, and if you can answer it, you're pretty much good. Yeah. Did you use flora or forest as? I did. Oh, the track out there or something. Sorry about the noise. We made, we had a huge, like, when was it second year or something? Like, yeah, we so, made a huge forest. So I had flora, I yeah, think it was. Flora. And you could like go around the world and mm. plant trees as you went around the world. So pretty much what it is, it's an app that stops you from using your phone. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you set it for a certain amount of time and some plants you had to unlock to get like a certain amount of time. Yeah. And every time you completed that amount of time without touching your phone, it like grew a tree. Yeah. So in the app we had, if you grew a certain number of trees, they actually planted a tree for you as well. Oh yeah. I recommend that that is a great app if you often get distracted by the phone. I do a lot. And we've talked briefly about apps on iPad like Good Notes and Notability. Are there any other other apps you have? Oh, Essential Anatomy. Yeah, that's what I was meaning. We can like zoom in on the body and look all around, and you can pick nerves or vessels exactly. or muscles or bones. And um, like second and third year, you need it. Well, second year mainly, you need to know like the whole pathway of where these vessels and nerves go like what muscles yeah. they go in front of behind so mm. seeing it visually and you can actually like follow the path yeah it was so good for me yeah and i've got like ebooks so if you buy a textbook you can scan the qr code in the front mm. and the books come up as like an interactive ebook often they have videos and so i had like inkling which is like the interactive ebooks i obviously had like google docs and google sheets we use that a lot Oh, I had one where you could turn like a PDF and like write on it. Mm. I can't remember what that was. I've got Kahoot because we often play Kahoot. Yeah. Kahoot's a good way to actually study with your friends. Yeah. Everyone makes a Kahoot for like a different section of a module. Yeah. And that'd then you just all play all the Kahoots and you like learn that way. Yeah. No, that'd yeah. Be cool. The last point I have for preclinical is if you feel like you're struggling or you want help, just ask for it. Ask the lecturers, mm. ask your advisors, ask the head of the course, anyone. Ask your peers. Yeah, just ask for help because people are so willing to give you some of their time or at least direct you mm. to someone who will give you a bit of their time and they will help you. Yeah. So you don't need to struggle through. If you're struggling, you can, oh, like learning support as well. Yeah. It can help you figure out how you learn and things like that because you might struggle in ways different to your peers and not know it and need a little extra help and they can do that for you. So moving on to clinical. So we're in the hospital now. We're in the big bad world. We're all anxious. We have no idea what we're doing. We feel like we know nothing. All of that studying we just talked about and we just did. Out, out the window. window. <laughs> Forgot it all. It's basic. <laughs> yes, starting fresh. Yeah, everything is fresh. Yeah. What do you feel like you need to learn in clinical? Like, how is it different? Basically, every run, you've got asynchronous learning. So the options that they think that you should be learning. I did it for one module. Mm -hmm. and, well, one run, orthopedics, and then that's about it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, because I was like keen at the start. Yeah, and, then and that, I forgot about up. it. Yeah. But you basically just need to learn well, once you're in the hospital, you figure out what you're going to see all the time, especially in different runs, and then you kind of just brush up on relevant stuff to mm -hmm. what you're doing. And then you also do um, tutorials, so just brushing up on that type of content, and obviously progress tests throughout. So you're not tested per se, mm. you're very much examined. Yeah. So practical examinations, mm. critically appraising research, um, history taking and write-ups of histories. Yeah. Um, obviously there's like your portfolio, so like reflection and critical thinking. We've got our progress tests, which are like these big MCQ tests three times a year. So it's very different. I feel like you learn so much without really trying. Oh yeah. Because you're just sure. absorbing information that's thrown at your face. So if you guys are entering clinical, I want to say that it is so normal to feel overwhelmed. It is normal to feel anxious. It is normal to feel out of your comfort zone. Yeah. It's normal. I, I don't want to say it's normal to feel imposter syndrome. I didn't really feel imposter syndrome because that implied like I wasn't meant to be there. I knew I was meant mm. to be there and I knew I was meant to learn. 
but I did have like a low level underlying anxiety, I yeah. guess you could say. Same here. Like I show, it's every day when you have to meet someone new or you've got a different consultant or a relief and you have to introduce yourself and figure out where you're going and the anxiety that comes along with that and then you're supposed to learn on top of that. Yeah. So it's definitely can, can be high stress, it can be like anxiety inducing, it can, you know, it's can cause panic sometimes yeah but once you get the hang of it that all that dims down i feel like yeah. and you get more comfortable and the learning comes a lot easier yeah definitely. because you're more focused on that right yeah yeah what was your favorite run from fourth year my favorite run oh it's toss up between i've got a couple Orthopedics, because that was my first run. I just really enjoyed it. Um, um, I enjoyed ED. That was really fun. Oh, loved ED. I um, learned so much in like a few shifts. And then... Sorry, watching the dogs. Um, I did quite like our specialty in Gen Med runs, just because of the consultants, and I learned a lot. I loved Ortho. I also really liked ED, yeah. and I really liked my spec med, so endocrinology and cardiology I found really interesting. Yeah. I'll talk, we'll talk briefly about progress tests, because I'm sure a lot of universities, a lot of medical schools will have something similar, like big multi-choice question. Yeah. So like, I know in America they have like the board exams, like USMLEs, these aren't quite as difficult as USMLEs. But similar kind of format, and then I know that the UK has something similar because we use their Q bank. Mm, yeah. So there are two Q banks which I recommend, and that is PassMed. Mm -hmm. So PassMed is British yeah. and has practice MCQs with explanations for the answers, like why that is the answer and why the others aren't the answer. Yeah. Um, and then another one I recommend is Amboss. Yeah. Amboss is an American and a lot more. I felt like it was a lot more intense than past med. Very detailed. Very, very detailed. And yeah. obviously all the drugs and words and stuff were in the American language. Yeah, so QBanks. There are heaps of QBanks. You can do your own research. Yeah. If you're based in Auckland or Otago, New Zealand, we recommend past med, the med student finals yeah. question bank, not the years. Oh, years one to three, maybe for pre-clinical, but then, mm. yeah, med school final years for clinical. I also recommend um, Geeky Medics actually has like um, a question bank too which I only just discovered yeah. like second half of this year and they are a bit nicer than past med and Ambos. they're quite just like more simpler but also quite similar to our progress test because we have some nice questions and progress tests too as well mm. as quite difficult ones which the other two um, question banks can quiz you a lot better on. Yeah. Also if you go to Auckland Uni on Canvas they have um, past progress test mm, um, questions. questions. Yeah they've got so, six, six mock exams. Yeah. yeah so we've got like our own kind of QBank I know universities canvas page. I'm not all universities use canvas, but it's kind of like blackboard or like your intranet yeah. kind of thing. Your university might provide you with QBanks as well. I used those a little bit, but it definitely wasn't my main thing mm. because I knew that they wouldn't include those questions yeah. in the progress test. Yeah. So it's kind of like, thank you for the mock exam and to get me thinking of what I should learn, but yeah. it's quite good to go away and look at other QBanks as well. Yeah. I would do, it was really funny, like when, when I'm boosting around the hospital like this, often with like my friends on my run, we'd have our phones out and just be doing like past me, like when yeah. we're walking up the stairs, like we'll do like five questions now, quick, we've got like six flights to go up. So I'll be like, oh, blah, 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 this lady's presented with blah, 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 blah. Um, and like, what test should you run next? Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, this, or like, this person have HIV, what's their most likely cancer they're going to have? Oh, this. Mm. So... It was, it's literally so good because you can literally just pull it up, do a few questions here and there and good to go. You can also obviously study in big chunks. So like do 20 a day, like yeah. the week before the progress test, that sort of thing. I guess that's a big chunk of our study in clinical is for those tests. So yeah, yeah we have to be pretty onto it. With general learning, it's very self-directed, which I guess is different to preclinical. Yeah. So you don't have to learn anything if you don't want to. Yeah. It's up to you. It really is up to you. When it was self-directed, what did you do? Well, me being the type A that I am, I, for a general study, 
yeah or course. general study or for each run or so I guess on top of like ideas and concepts that I thought were relevant to my run that I would just brush up as I would go along I study for progress test is my kind of baseline just keeping all the different topics that we had learned in preclinical years still relevant mm -hmm. and um, kind of in my mind so I didn't forget about them so I throughout the year I would set kind of a timetable for myself like every day I wanted to go over maybe like I don't know like nephrology so like go over AKIs or CKDs one day then like um, like glomerular nephritis and stuff like that and then on top of that I would try to 20 to 30 past med questions and so I did that for most of the year yeah I know that's quite intense and I wrote heaps of notes over the year but that's do you have I did. can you screen record I can. Of your notes so this is just an example of how I studied for our last progress test I started um, quite a few weeks out, I think it was about nine weeks out um, and so each week, so this one is a cardio week, I had a few ideas that I wanted to cover per day as well as past med questions. Sometimes I didn't get through them all, it just depends on, because this is after a long day at the hospital as well, it's just kind of a rough guideline of what I would like to be learning, um, so that's kind of how I would structure that. In terms of my notes during clinical years, progress test, um, it kind of, yeah, so this one here is for cardiac arrhythmias, so I kind of structure it, all the little bullet points. So I was using um, Kumar and Clark's clinical medicine, as well as just looking at um, Oxford handbook. So I did a mixture of handwriting and typing just so I could get the stuff done. I found kind of keeping myself, giving myself a schedule so I held myself accountable doing notes. Um, even though I was, like Emily was saying, like learning a lot in the hospital, I just personally uh, felt I needed... Lola, that's not for you. No. Thank you. I personally found that I needed to keep, um, keep writing notes for the progress test. I don't really have any notes to show you to be honest. I did pretty much zero note taking last year. I did do um, some Anki questions, but I mostly did past med. I mostly like worked through like read textbooks. I definitely did test myself with Grey's Anatomy Anatomy mm. flashcards for the musculoskeletal uh, yeah. section. Yeah, I found that really good just to like brush up on my anatomy. But a lot of my learning was done at the hospital, and I would keep so every patient had a sticker with like their identification number on it I've got a book yeah full of these stickers of like the patients I learnt or like treated or learnt about and I would often go back to their kind of file in the computer mm. and follow them up and see like what tests they had done what were they diagnosed with what were they treated with and I would build these kind of patient profiles in my mind for certain conditions. So I'd be like, this person had really bad pancreatitis. This is what we did. This is what we treated them with. This is how, like, these are our protocols. And I kind of did that with, like, lots of different patients with lots of different conditions. This is one of the books. I have multiple. Like, I can't show you, but there's all the, like, their stickers. Hmm. And I wrote kind of, like, what they had. So I could like go back and figure out, you know, like read more about it or, you know, like we had a really rare guy, we had a really rare guy with a rare endocrine mm. kind of tumour and I've kept his sticker because I'm interested to see, like he was having a scan. I don't want to talk too much because we're a small country and you might be able to identify the guy but yeah. I want to be able to follow him up essentially and like learn more about his condition and mm. kind of like what happened and how we treated it and stuff. So often I'd go home and research the condition of the patients I felt like I yeah. connected with. I'd be like, that patient was really interesting. I want to learn more about their condition. Totally. And like often you go back the next day on rounds or, or a few days later and they're still there and you've read about it and mm. you feel like 
you understand it more and so you get more out of like the water round. Yeah, exactly. A lot of the patients, you'll, they'll be there for a while. So mm. it's just like if you've never heard of the disease or whatever they've come in with, brush up on it. And then you, mm. and when you hear the conversations of like what tests the doctors are going to do next or what their treatment's going to be, you're going to be like, ah. Oh, yeah, I read I about that. And yeah. I know why they're doing that and things like that. And don't be afraid to ask your oh. bosses, like, yeah. why are you doing that? Or why are you giving them that? Or like, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Like, no. uh, an ortho, I do things like, oh, what bone is it on the x-ray? I'm not really sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, they might, like, roll their eyes a little bit and be like, oh, why don't you know that? But they have forgotten what it feels like to come in not knowing anything. Yeah. So don't be afraid to ask questions. And if anything, it shows that you're being inquisitive. Interested. And, yeah. yeah, and interested in actually listening because, like, I can admit, uh, sometimes on water hours, I'll just be zoned out. Mm. Whereas you need to kind of impress your bosses and show that you're you're listening. So yeah, always ask questions. If you can't afford textbooks, I know they're expensive. You can all go to like Reddit and other places and get the PDFs for oh, free. Nice. Um, there'll probably be like your uni. Someone might have organised like a Google Drive. Yeah, like we've kind of got a Google Drive of textbooks that you can download at your leisure. leisure. Having friends in the hospital is really good, like in, like in your colleagues and your peers, to bounce ideas off yeah. and talk to each other about interesting cases and scenarios you've seen, eh? Like mm -hmm. at lunch, I'll be like, oh my God, I've got this patient with X, Y, Z and we're doing this. And they'll be like, oh my God, we've got a patient with like A, B, C and we're yeah. doing this. And you like share and bounce off each other, you know, ideas of, and, and you learn like that as well. Because yeah. you're not going to see everything. No, so. no way, yeah. no way. Like. I remember being on endo and being like, oh my god, I got this patient with this. And I was like, oh, that's super mm -hmm. rare. And I was like, I know. And they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh my god, this is what we're doing. And then someone else went, oh my god, I've got this crazy tumor we're removing in Gen Surge. Like, yeah. this is how we're going to do it. And like, rah, rah, rah. So learn off your peers, bounce off your colleagues, discuss cases with your colleagues because you can't really discuss them with anyone else yeah. for confidentiality reasons. But also, like, lay people may not truly understand and yeah. be able to give you back that reciprocation you're kind of looking for yeah exactly so you had little books kind of like this right mm. so in your bag in the hospital i and so did tyler yeah. carried around little books like this mm -hmm. and we kept 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 goodness we kept little notes so every time you see an, something interesting mm. or like your reg sits down and gives you a little mini teaching session which yeah. is great you should definitely try and get as much one-on-one -on -one time with your bosses as you can i would write it down in here and i had pretty much one of these notebooks per run i reckon mm, same um, and not more and you just, yeah and you just fill it up with little crazy notes and they don't really necessarily make sense now but i look back and i'm like oh i remember when i wrote that down i remember what we talked about yeah things like that so and also the the writing as well, like not just listening to your range talk. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Perhaps with the learning. Yeah. Don't let the anxiety of being in that new environment deter you from your learning. You are totally entitled to being there. Yeah. It is a teaching hospital. You are the future, essentially. I forgot what I was saying now. What was I saying? Oh yeah, don't let that anxiety stop you from learning. Yeah. Did you guys have a library at your hospital? Yeah, we had cool hours here, but we didn't have... Ah, uh, I never tried to go there after hours, but there was a small library that had a few computers. So we had a whole yeah. a area for med students. Yeah, we didn't have it. And then we had the, our library, like the, uh, the hospital library, which was upstairs. Mm. And you could apply for 24-hour access. So I had 24-hour access mm -hmm. to the upstairs library. Downstairs all the computers were university computers mm. so for university and that was open like 8 to 5 or something so I'd often be at the university ones just like doing a little bit of research or whatever mm. and then when I had assignments and things like that I'd be upstairs in the library because they had like DHB computers oh. so you can access like the um, hospital records and things yeah but I recommend utilizing the li libraries at the hospital mm. because they're really a quiet space to study They've got access to all the documentation and things you need on the computers and they've got heaps of textbooks there and you can just rent them out and keep extending the rental. So you can just have a textbook for like a few months and you know you can get run specific textbooks 
So you're not spending money on it? I so never did that. Yeah, ortho textbooks, endocrine textbooks, that sort of thing. Go in with an open mind. Yeah. It's crazy, but it's so awesome. Yeah. It's so different to preclinical and... Don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. You're adjusting to a huge change going from lecture theatres every day to kind of working, but mm -hmm. just it, like... Um, What's it called? Just like watching and yeah. learning that way. But yeah, be kind to yourself and just kind of figure out how you can study in that new environment. We're almost at the end. Is that better? Yeah. Sorry, we had to change the battery, yeah? And like, we had to take the camera off to do that. So bear with us. So bear with us. Mm -hmm. You've made it this far. If you're going into clinical medicine, you're amazing. You are incredible. Yeah. You are in the minority of the minority. So be really proud of that, I guess. And if you're not there yet, if you're entering first year, if you're in high school, mm. hopefully there were some things in here that you could maybe take away to that. Yeah. And your hard work and dedication will 100% pay off. They are definitely like foundation building blocks for your future of learning lots, gaining knowledge, growing your brain so it's super massive yeah. and getting real smart. Want. Until you're like me and you can't even pronounce words properly. Question. Comment down below. Do you like the new <laughs> croissant shaped rash and rashes? Yeah. But anyways, we hope you gained something. Um, thank you so much to Tyler. You guys need to give her a big round of applause. I she, hope it's helpful. She takes a lot of time out of her day to help me with these videos and drives all the way here from her house and she sat down and and thought of things to talk about and off the cuff as you probably noticed <laughs> <laughs> so she's like it's so great having her here i know you guys love her and she's definitely like an integral part of my channel it really should be the like tyler and emily show maybe we should make a separate channel should we make a podcast oh my... <laughs> no, we what would we call our podcast would you guys listen to a podcast if you, got know. A, if you got to this point in a video let us know below mm. we don't have yarns eh? yeah if you guys like this video with Tyler, let me know. We can have her around here more. If there's more topics you want covered, we can organize that. We've got an event to go to, so we gotta go. Mm. We love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, all that good stuff, because we love to have you around here, and we'll see you next week for another video. Bye! Bye! Bye. Done and dusted!